Hallelujah. 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 We're, we're looking forward to what he is going to do, what the Lord is going to say through him. Hallelujah. Are y'all ready for a word? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for the man of God, and we're going to believe that God is going to move. Listen, somebody say, get ready. Get ready. We're moving into a new season of Freedom Movement Church, yeah. where God is raising up many people of giftedness. There are other preachers in this room, even right now, that you're going to hear from in a little while. Amen? Amen. And this is a place that whatever your gift is, the Bible says, your gift will make room for you. Amen? Amen. Whatever your place of serving and calling, we are all called to serve, and we are all called to operate because it builds the kingdom and it makes Freedom Movement Church so much stronger. Are you excited? Amen. Amen. Listen, we're going to stretch out our hands, and we're going to pray for the man of God, and then after we pray, the next voice you shall hear. As they did in old school, the next voice you shall hear after the choir. So y'all know that kind of church. Y'all know that kind of church. The next voice is the man, not the man of God, but the man of God. Gotta put a B on that, amen? The man of God, Reverend Chris Graves, amen. amen. Let's stretch out our hands to the man of God. Father, we give you glory, we give you praise, we thank you for raising this man of God for a time such as this to deliver and proclaim your word. We ask that you anoint him afresh, pour out your spirit even on him as he opens up his mouth. You would fill it with your word. There was something specific you want to say to us as your people. And we hear it. We receive it in Jesus' name. Give him preaching power in Jesus' name. None of him, all of you, in Jesus' name. And come against any hindrance, any distraction. We believe by faith is already done. That we will be edified and you will be glorified. So we honor you. We adore you, Lord God. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say preach, Reverend Chris. Let's give God praise for Reverend Chris Graves. Thank you, Lord, for restoring me yes. to this proclamation ministry. Thank you, Pastor Jeff, for not only being my pastor, but being my mentor and being my friend. Amen. Thank you for uh, allowing me to be in the pulpit at this time. I want to thank you to my wife, sweetie, <laughs> Lynn, my family for standing oh, right. uh, by me and supporting me through thick and thin. Amen. Thank you. Amen. And finally, I want to thank you, Freedom Movement Church family, friends and visitors, uh, and for those listening online, thank you for sharing with me in this moment to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. So let me get a few particulars out of the way, because some of you know me and some of you don't, so <laughs> let, me, let me just let you know who I am. All right. My name is Reverend Christopher Graves. All right. My wife may call me Turtle. My grandson may call me father, short for grandfather. My co-workers may call me Nurse Graves. When I was in the Army, they called me Lieutenant Graves. Uh, the Kingdom men here at Freedom Movement Church may call me Brother Chris. But I will simply call myself a child of God. An imperfect man, but a decent brother, just trying to strive his way, trying to get into heaven. That's all I'm trying to do. That's all I'm trying to do. That's all right. That's all right. So, as we go, Amen. since I got that out of the way, I want to welcome you once again to Freedom Movement Church. This is my church. All right. Okay. I, I got the shirt to prove. There we go. This is my church. My church. This is a church uh, that strives uh, to lead all people all people to an authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's the motto, and I can say, because I've been at this church now for years, I love it, for years. And I know exactly, that's exactly what this church does. So how do I know? How do you know that I have an authentic relationship with Christ? Well, let me just tell you right now. Let me tell you about the relationship that I have with Jesus. Mm -hmm. I want you to know right now, 
I don't know if you know who he is. I can tell you who he is to me. Yeah. He's my master. Yeah. He's my savior. Yeah. He's my way maker. Yeah. He's my redeemer. Yeah. He's my will in the middle of the will. Right. He comforts me when I'm weary. He's yeah. the one who saved my sin sick soul. He's the one who I cry out to in the middle of the night. He's the one who I give thanks to for every meal, every time I get behind the wheel, before I go to sleep at night, even when I wake up in the morning, every time I lose my mind, every time I run out of energy, every time I'm faced with problems, he's there for me. So I can spend all the rest of the service talking about what he is to me, but I'm not going to do that. But before I get started, I need to ask you a question. Just, a, just one question, one question, you don't have to answer, but the question is this, how many of you are struggling with something? Mm -hmm. yeah. Struggling yeah. with something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to raise your hand, you don't have to say amen, that's okay. It's really more for internal reflection as I preach of this sermon today. I'm talking about real struggles. How many of you are really struggling with something? Something that may keep you awake, something that may cause you to cry or be depressed. The kind of struggle that may cause you uh, to make a, uh, cause you to put you in a place where you have to make a decision that can alter the rest of your life. That's I'm talking right. about struggles that may not only affect you, but affect that's the right. people that you love, that's your family. Right. I don't know, maybe there's someone that's trying to harm you. Maybe there's someone that's trying to make you fall, make you fail. Maybe it's someone who just wants to do you in. Woo! You know, a real struggle. A real struggle. Maybe you're having difficulty keeping a roof over your head. Maybe you're having trouble uh, getting your bills paid. Maybe you're having trouble uh, putting food on your table. Maybe you're yeah. just having trouble, period. Maybe the trouble is all in your mind. Amen, amen. Real, real struggles. Maybe you have an issue with a teacher. I'm going to try and get everyone on everybody's street. Maybe you're having trouble with your child. Maybe you're having trouble with a stranger. Maybe uh, you're having trouble with with just everything. The yeah. weather, the traffic, yeah. your health, just everything. But we all have things that we're dealing with. We all have issues that we're struggling with. We all have things that are that, are, that cause us problems. And I don't know exactly what it is that you're dealing with, but I want to tell you that we all have them. Yeah. We all have something. I don't care how good somebody looks. You, know, you, got, you got people that walk around here saying, oh, I don't have no problems. I'm good. Everything's fine. I'm doing well. Really? I've been around long enough to see a lot of people have that, have that face, have that have persona, but things might be really going on on the inside. A lot of times when I'm going through things, you don't really know what I'm going through on the outside, but on the inside, I'm tore up. That's it. I'm That's tore it. up. That's we it. all have struggles. We all have pressure. I know that I, I heard last week, I think I int got introduced to some. We got some nursing students uh, that are here in the building. I'm, I'm a nurse, been a nurse for a long time. But even the nursing students know that everybody has, medically speaking, pressure. Mm -hmm. We all have pressure. Mm -hmm. We all have a blood pressure. You know, if for some reason you don't have no pressure, guess what? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We all got pressure. We all got pressure. So let's get into the word, shall we? Uh, the scripture today, and again, I, I will offer my humble apologies publicly, as I always did privately. I was supposed to text in uh, so that the media ministry can have the, the word listed, um, but for some reason... I kept messing it up all week long. How, how many of you know that the enemy tries to do everything he can to deter you, to distract you, and deflect you on what God has for you to do? But the devil was a liar. Amen. He's already defeated. Amen. Right? But he's going to still try to do what he can, but it don't really matter. You can't uh, stop God and what God has in store for you. The devil can't stop God's purpose that he has for you. So Amen. let's go ahead and stand. The, the, the scripture today is going to be coming from Luke. 13, verses 22 through 28. Amen. Luke 13. And I'll be reading, I'm actually going to be reading from the King James Version. Um, 
but whatever version you have, it's cool. Wasn't just a media issue that I had, I had some, some technical issues at home trying to print this thing up, but that's all right, God is still good. Yeah. Um, Luke 13, 20 through through 28. I'm just going to read the King James Version, and here it goes. Uh, Luke 13, 22, it says, And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying, journeying towards Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and had shut the door, and you begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Then shall you begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Amen. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. Wow. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, maker of heaven and earth, Lord, you are God and you're God all by yourself. And Father, right now, Lord, this is your time, Father. I ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you just open me up, open my mouth, uh, so that you can speak through me, Father, to your people, Lord. We yeah, need you. Yeah. We can't you, We can't make it without you, Lord. So we need you right now, Father. So I ask, Lord, that you just have your way, have you behind the cross, Father. You are God, and there is none like you. So, Father, we need you and ask for your instruction right now. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My way may not be easy. You did not say that it would be. But if it gets dark and I can't see my way, you told me to put my trust in thee. That's why I'm asking you, Lord. Help me to hold out. Please, Lord, help me to hold out. Yeah. I'm begging you, Lord. Please, sir, Jesus, help me to hold out. Help me to hold out until my change has come. No, I'll probably do you off a little bit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're all right. I'm just going to sing your But there's a reason why I did that, actually. It's, it's, it's part, of the, part of the song. Uh, I'm also a crying preacher, too, so just forgive me if I pull out, pull out the tissues, you know. Come uh, on. But anyway, I needed to do that. I needed to get that out the way. Yeah. So. Just want to tell you that that song right there. I know some of you young folks probably don't know anything about that. But <laughs> that's okay. I know there's a few seasoned saints here that, yes, that know that song. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. But before I go, let me let me take a little time to lay some foundations. So I need to talk to you uh, uh, about this scripture. But before I do that, I want to make a connection with all the struggles and all the issues that we have going on. I sang that song for a reason, and I'm going to talk about it here uh, in just a second. But what I want to do before we get into the scripture, I want to kind of give you a few tips. I want to share with you a few things that um, I call them my, you know, my tips. Just something you can take notes. Um, and actually, it's going to be each point will be just a couple of words. I'm not trying to write a lot down. Um, just want to say some things to kind of drop in your spirit. 
so, um, and, and take it from me. I'm someone who, as you can see now, got a, got a few gray hairs. You know, everybody that got gray hair say amen. All right, all right. See? Some, some of you got that, that it's really gray, but it looks black. So that, uh, what do you call it, Beijing or something? Like but anyway, we won't go there. We won't go there. We won't go there. I'm trying to chill. Okay, okay, seriously. Uh, few tips, few tips. First tip that I have for you is just to be thankful. Just be thankful. Be thankful. Sounds obvious, you know, be thankful, but when you're dealing with real struggles, real issues, things that are that are happening in your life that are major, major, huge, tremendous things, you need to learn how to just be thankful. Be thankful. I want to tell you something. I don't care what you got going on, Thank you. whatever issues you have in life. Thank you. If you can just be thankful, Thank just remember that no matter what you got going on, Thank God is still with you. Thank you. And you and God, Thank you plus God, that's a majority. I don't care what else, whatever, whatever else is going on, whatever issues, so you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. But I was at, when I thought about being thankful, I thought about a uh, situation um, in probably 2010 or 11. Um, I was, went to Haiti. Um, they had this major, major earthquake. It was a 7.0 earthquake. Um, and if you've ever seen destruction from an earthquake, maybe on pictures, uh, I went there. I seen destruction of earthquakes on pictures. But when I saw the destruction in person, in, mm. in, in front of my face, it, it, it really did something to me. Mm. Uh, but I want to tell you about that situation when I went there. There was so many buildings that were crumbled, so many, the streets were tore up. There were so many lives that were lost there. It was, it was just really, really, really uh, heart-wrenching to see. Um, so my first day that I was there, I was with a group um, that was ministering there in Haiti. They had been there for a long time. Uh, so they, you know, we had a group of us and we were all preachers and we all got in trucks and we went uh, to, to different spots, you know, all these, these buildings. Most of them were really, really, really tore up, but, you know, we were still trying to have some semblance of church and have some semblance of trying to encourage them. Because when I went there, it was really, I'd say maybe a month or less than a month after the earthquake hit. So there was still stuff everywhere. People were struggling. And so when we went there, on the way there, you know, we were in a truck. And, and so, you know, the windows were down. And, you know, we're going up and down through these uh, streets and trying to get over rubble and trying to get to the to the church, and as I was driving there from the passenger side, I was listening and I, I heard a noise in the background. We were driving real slow, because you know, when it's all that destruction and stuff, you, know, you can't get anywhere fast. But I heard this noise in the background, I thought, oh, you know, they must be having a soccer game or something like that, and I couldn't, I was like, wow, there's so much debris and stuff everywhere, I wonder where they're having a soccer game. I figured, you know, they must have went and cleared out a place for them to play or something. And so uh, driving along, as we get to the building, I look around and at the building, um, the place was so jacked up. I mean, just for, for lack of a better word, it was really bad. I mean, like I said, it was after a major earthquake. Yeah. So we, we were going and I was like, where am I going to preach at? Well, this building, I'm like, okay. Uh, but as I get outside of the truck, I start listening and I found realized that the noise, the noise that I was hearing was coming from the church. Mm, come on now. They were all in the basement. So before I got in the basement, I, I get out the truck and I'm looking at the building and I'm hearing, oh, it's, it's them. And I, I look ahead and all I see was uh, blue tents. See, when, when the earthquake hit, you know, a lot of the structures, you know, they were wiped out. 
And so there was nothing but blue tents. As far as I could see, mm. blue, to small blue tents, not big, small blue tents. And so this is where they were having to live because they had no dwelling. Mm. But they weren't in the blue tents when I got out the truck. They were they were down in the in the basement of this building having church. Mm. I couldn't believe it. I'm thinking, looked at my watch and said, Well, we're we're on time. What what are they doing? They was already having church before oh. I even got there. Oh. They were praising God, singing to God. It was it was miraculous. It was probably one of the most if, if I had to come up with an example of being thankful in times of struggle, I've never seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. They were having church like, I, I just, I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. So, so impactful on me. But I asked the film, I said, you know, uh, what's going on? You know, why are you able to have church when I just heard that some of you are still looking for loved ones? Some of you still don't have all your belongings. Um, I even knew at that point that they were still trying to scramble for food and water and, and medicine and all that kind of stuff. But they're in here having church. I, you know, and, I, and so I, 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 it blew me away. Blew me away. But that's how it was. And I've never, ever, ever forgotten that. It's all about perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about perspective. What what you think is struggling, you might go overseas or go into another country, and they don't think you're struggling at all. Right. The people, the things that I saw in Haiti were bad. When I went to Africa, it was even worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Struggling is it's a it's a perspective. Yeah. It's a perspective. But we did. We had an awesome time in the in the Lord that that night. But if I had to sum it all up there, I was like, these folks were truly thankful. Amen. Thankful. When they was going through, they were, they were having church. Uh, they were letting God know. They were screaming hallelujah. I mean, like I said, you got to be thankful. Amen. You got to remember that no matter what you got going on, you know, he's still God. Yeah. You know, even if you're stuck in a situation and you have no conceivable way to get yourself unstuck, he's still God. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, I tell you, you need to be thankful. Amen. Regardless of the circumstance. And I didn't say it would be easy. Right. But you can do it. Mm -hmm. You can learn that that when you're thankful, it has a way for your faith to grow mm -hmm. in yeah, those situations, in spite of whatever happens. God can do anything but fail. Right. You know, he's omniscient. He's omnipresent. Uh, he's omniscient. What problem do we really have on this earth that God can't fix? Amen. See, I had to learn that lesson the hard way. I did. I can just go ahead and testify right now. See, when I started going, when there were times when I went through problems and I had issues, um, sure, I sang that song as a child. And I asked the Lord to help me to hold out. And I dealt with my ups and downs. But I'm going to tell you, just real talk, I had times that when my struggles got so overwhelming, I used to get mad at God. I used to get mad at God. Mad, upset, ticked off because of situations that were happening in my life. I wanted to blame everybody else but me. But I did. I used to get mad at God. Mm. And so in dealing with that, one of the things that I learned is that even though you got issues and even though you have problems and even though there's issues that are maybe really, really, really rough, mm. you got to be thankful. That's the first one. But the second one is that you don't question. You don't question. Man, you don't question. I just need to keep it real with you. Don't question. And I'm going to explain it. You don't question God. Why? Why did this happen to me? Why did I have to go through this? Why was I picked to do this? This is not fair. I didn't have anything to do with this problem and this struggle and this situation. Why, God? 
Why me? When I was a nursing director at a hospital, and I had a chief nursing officer, uh, my boss wanted us to do some training, and I didn't want to do the training. Um, it was one of those things where we were getting ready for an inspection, so we was just trying to focus on the inspection and trying to do uh, everything we needed to do to prepare for us. And I'm talking to my boss, and I'm like, oh, Lord, my, I mean, the uh, uh, boss, my, my staff, they're tired, they're wore out, we getting ready for this inspection, and my staff has just been tired, my staff need a break, my staff this, my staff that, I'm just going on and on and on. And she was like, okay, Chris, let me tell you something. She said, before they're your staff, they're my staff. Now, I've never forgotten that. It kind of shut me up real quick after she said that. <laughs> but I know it's your life. I know that you're struggling. I know that you're having issues and you want to question God. But let me tell you something. Before it's your life, it's his life. Your life is here. It's hard to remember that sometimes when you're going through all the ups and downs, the twists and turns. But remember that if you uh, are born again, if you've given your life over to Jesus, your life is his. Does that make sense? Once you give your life over to Christ, your life belongs to God. And newsflash here even if you haven't given your life over yet, they like to steal guys too. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Really? He's the creator. He is the creator. He knows what you need better than you do. That's good. I'm not trying to be cold about it, you know, but the truth is the truth. He knows better than you. So you gotta trust him. Yeah. Don't question him. So let me let me be clear about this. I didn't say you can't ask God a question. I said you can't question him. There is. There's a big difference. You can ask humbly, Lord, why is this happening to me? Why did they do that to me? Can you please explain to me the lesson that I need to learn from this? You can ask that. That's fine. Sometimes the struggles and the trials and the tribulations that you go through, you have to go through them so you can get through what God has in store for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't want to hear that sometimes. We don't want to uh, believe that sometimes. We don't even want to handle it sometimes, but that's the truth. I am a witness for that, Lord, let me tell you. Amen. So, I can personally testify about that. Ask God a question, but don't question God. You see, when you question him, that's the wrong attitude. That you have to that that you're you're in. That's the wrong frame of mind. You don't, you don't want to get to a point where you're questioning God. Trust me, you don't want that smoke. I've I've been in that situation. Okay, you don't want to do it. What you're doing when you when you're questioning God, what you're doing is you're challenging Him. You're trying to challenge God. How are you gonna be able to do that? You want to challenge God because it's your life? Remember, I told you, it's not your life anyway, it's his. But you're going to try to challenge God. Uh -huh. And the only thing I could think of, example of that, was how would you feel, for all of you that have children, if your child tried to challenge you in your house? <laughs> how, how would you deal with that? What? You want to challenge me? Are you still in diapers? Breath smelling like Similac? Are you going to challenge me? Right, right, right. But that's kind of how I looked at it, right? Uh, I, it's funny because I have a grandson. He's five years old, Jojo. Yeah, I hadn't seen him, but most of you hadn't seen him. But he got two things that he's going to say when he comes to my house. And he, he, ain't, he don't care. He don't care. He'll tell you. So the father. Where's the pizza? You want to know where the pizza is. And the second thing is, he wants to watch Paw Patrol, okay? Pizza and Paw Patrol, period. He comes in the house like he owned it, like he paid the bill. He paid the lights, he paid the cable. 
he got he paid for the food in the refrigerator. Where's the pizza and the Paw Patrol? <laughs> so you know how I handle that? I go get him some pizza. <laughs> and I go turn on the Paw Patrol. My <laughs> wife knows. It's true. He paid the bills there. That's his <laughs> house. But anyway. <laughs> But if you have a problem, you gotta question God. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can ask him a question, but you can't question, you can't challenge him. That's right. Who can stand before God? Mm -hmm. Who can challenge God? Mm. Nobody can. Who can do the things that he does? Mm. Who can think the things that he thinks? Mm -hmm. You can't do that. Job had all kinds of things done to him. Lost his children, lost his all his uh, animals, uh, lost most of his good health. But even he had the good sense to not challenge God. Oh, yeah. Keep that in mind when you're going through, when you're struggling. First one, be thankful. Uh -huh. Second one, don't question. So now the third one. And these are just the tips. I'm, we'll get to the scripture here. I'm trying to move along. Tip three. Sing a song. Yeah. Amen. Sing a song. True story. When I was a boy, uh, my family, we, we went through a series of struggles. Mm -hmm. Struggles that were serious, deep, and complicated. Mm -hmm. These struggles lasted off and on basically throughout my whole childhood. Mm -hmm. One day I might share about it later, but when I was a boy, we didn't go to church that much. We went when we could. Um, but there was a radio station in Indianapolis, WTLC, oh. the soul station in Indianapolis. And on certain days and times, they would play gospel songs. And those songs played a critical part of my spiritual growth and development. So believe it or not, uh, real talk, uh, not every song I listened to, but, but some songs. There were some songs there. And in my youth, I was still trying to wrap my young brain around these major family problems. I was too young to really know what to do. But I knew we had struggles, and I knew that nobody seemed to be able to help us. So as a child, I really uh, should not have been trying to trouble myself with these adult things, but that was not my life. So I, had, I would listen to these songs, and like the one I sang earlier and a few others, even though I wasn't going to church regularly, I would hear these songs. And I know I didn't fully understand the meaning of those songs, but in my mind, in a young mind, I gave my life when I was 12, I listened to these songs for a few years before then because when I would sit at home and try to figure out, like I could figure it out, uh, what can I do with my life and my situations, I would hear those songs. And that was one of the songs that I heard. So in my own mind, I would try to figure things out. What can I do? How can I deal with the situation? How can I survive? Can, how, can we, how can we make it? And then I would hear that song and I would think, Hmm. Maybe God can help me with these songs, with, with my life. Amen. Maybe God can help me with my mom and my family and my sister. Maybe God can help work this out for me. I, I didn't know. I was too young and inexperienced to really figure these things out. But these songs were really ministered to me. Mm -hmm. Even though I fully didn't understand the meaning uh, about the songs, um, you know, when, when I, I said you heard it said, my way may not be easy. I kind of understood that as a 12 year old. I, I knew what it was like to be in the dark and you couldn't see my way. I, I understood that part pretty good. But when it got to the part, you know, to put my trust in thee, I was, you know, I had to think about it. Who is thee? You know, I couldn't figure it out. How can I put my trust in thee? And then the, the, the singers would say, Reverend James Cleveland would say, Lord, help me to hold out. I got that part. I got that part. Means something to me, that song. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but, but that song meant something to me. It really meant something to me when I was young and I was growing up trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Would my change come? Would my situation change? When would that happen? Mm -hmm. How could that happen? Mm -hmm. When would this end? I didn't know. But when I was 12, Hearing those songs and listening to people preach, I decided to give my life over to the Lord with the express urgent plea, Lord, please help me and my family. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. So I gave my life over. And now, many, many years later, being a grown man, mm. an older man, I can say that God really did help me to hold out. Yeah. He really did. Yeah. The devil tried to block me, but God helped me mm. to hold out yeah. until my change has come. Yeah. And my change did come. God did show up for me. God did make a way for me. God did help me and my family. Those songs help me bridge an understanding of who God is and what he is and what he can do for me. So I sing that song. I sing that song. I've never heard me sing it. I sing that song when I'm by myself. I sing that song when I'm in the car. I sing that song when I'm down. I sing that song when I'm up. I sing that song when I'm struggling and I don't have the words. You know, to ask God about that particular problem, I just start singing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I start singing. It's been very helpful to me. So that's my tip for you. Yeah, man. Sing a song. Yeah, yeah. Be thankful. Don't question God. And sing a song. Amen. All right. Those are my three tips. So let's get into this word here. Luke 13, uh, 22, 28. And I move, I'll try to move through it. Like I told you, the the... Enemy tried to distract me, so I'm going to, uh, we're going to treat this just like our Bible study in my house. We're just going just yeah. to go through this and talk for just a second. Hope I'm good for time. Mm -hmm. At the time of this scripture, what was going on? Jesus was walking, he was, he was on his way to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Luke doesn't go into big particulars over who was there with them at the time. I, you know, you read uh, past chapters and you'll see that there were people that were traveling with Jesus during that time. Um, there was Jesus, there were the disciples, there were the Pharisees, you know, there were people there that were just trying to see if they could get healed or get a blessing. There were some people who were just, just there, just, just looking and seeing what's going on. That's, that's, that's what I think, what was going on. But when you look at that, somebody that was in that crowd asked a question. Mm -hmm. They said unto the Lord, they said, are there few that would be saved? In the Amplified Version, it, it clarifies and says, Lord, will only a few be saved, rescued, and delivered from the penalties of the last judgment that made partakers of the salvation of Christ? So somebody asked that question. And what did God say? He said, you need to strive to enter in at the straight gate. You need to strive to enter in at the straight gate. If you look up the, the definition of, of striving, uh, it, it, one of them says, you know, you're striving, you're struggling vigorously. You're struggling vigorously. He says, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many I say unto you will seek to enter in and should not be able. So that whole definition, that whole thing about striving is something that you don't always hear about. Have any of you heard this scripture before? A lot of people haven't. Like, what? You got to strive? You got to struggle? I thought when you were a Christian and you gave your life over that everything was going to be peaches and cream from that point. That everything... Was, you're not going to have any problems yeah. right? that, that you won't have to strive you won't have to struggle but I'm here to tell you it's not like that mm -hmm. you're in a spiritual war yeah. whether yeah. you realize it or not wars are struggles wars are nothing calm about a war right. nothing easy about a war mm -hmm. there's death and destruction mm -hmm. in a war mm -hmm. so when you're in a spiritual war it's, it's not easy so if you think that things are going to happen or things are going to be such a way that you're never going to have any problems and never going to have any issues, that's, right. that's not the case. Mm -hmm. That's not the case at all. But you can make it to it. Mm -hmm. That's why I gave you those tips. Yeah. You can make it to it. You just have to trust God. Trust God mm -hmm. as you go through it. But he says, specifically, you need to strive to enter in at the straight gate. Now, 
The other thing that I like about this, um, even though somebody was probably trying to trip Jesus up, you know, uh, the people were, some of the people that were following him wasn't for him. You know that, right? They were trying to get him tripped up. They were trying to get him arrested and killed. Uh, but God already knew what their hearts were. And so instead of asking the question about the multitude and whether or not the multitude of people will be saved, he changed it around yeah, yeah. and said, you need to strive. Yep. To enter in. Yep. Uh -huh. yep. You need to strive. You'll hear me say this again, but I'm going to say it right now. Don't worry about what everybody else is going through. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Don't worry about uh, who said what, who did what, uh -huh. what's going to happen to them. Yeah. You need to be wholly concerned about where you're going to be, yeah. where yeah. you're going to yeah. go, yeah. what uh -huh. you need to do. Amen. If you spend 100% of the time minding your business, <laughs> You ain't got time to mess with anybody else. Okay, that, that wasn't in my note. That just, that just came out. Okay. So, but real talk, you got to strive to any end. So let's keep going. So when he, after he says that, and he's very clear, you need to seek to enter in. Entering into where? That's, that's the heaven, okay? Let's make sure we got that. I knew y'all knew that, but I just wanted to say it, okay? But then he, he further uh, describes and he says, he gives you a parable, and I love how he does it. You know, Jesus' parables, I mean, if you can't get that, okay, they're very clear, very easy to understand. He paints a vivid picture. He says, well, once the master of the house has risen up and he shut the door, he began to stand without and to knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us that Lord, Lord thing, right? Yeah. And they tell you, when you, when you say it, it's one thing to say Lord, when you say Lord, Lord, yeah, yeah. you know, that's an urgent thing. That's, urgent. That's, that's how it works. You call it out. When you see two names twice like that, that's what it means. Yeah. And he says, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. So you're not getting in now. <laughs> I don't know who you are. You ain't getting in. You ain't getting in my house if I don't know who you are. Right? Yeah, right. But knock on the door. Who is it? If I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> but I had in my mind when I, when I first uh, read this and I was studying it, the, the, the thought flashed back in my mind. I was trying to kind of picture this picture of trying to get into a building where, uh, you know, in order for you to get in, it's, it's one of those buildings where you can only get in through one way and you got the big security guard there, yeah. you know, and uh, you're trying to get in, but you don't have a pass. Oh. You can't get in. Oh. How are you going to get in? Well, you might look around. Like I said, there's only one door. You can't sneak in. Mm -hmm. You know, so what do you try to do? You try to figure out, oh, man, let me in. But, you know, I, I need to get in. And it's like, no. Sorry, no pass, no entry. No pass, no entry. And that's how I look at that. You know, I look at that uh, that parable in my head. But notice what happens after that. Mm -hmm. The people that couldn't get in, they said, then shall you begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. Mm -hmm. Just because you've heard who Jesus is. Come on, right. come on. Just because you may have been sitting here and you've heard, maybe you're listening right now, you've heard about Jesus, but if you haven't given your life over to him, Come on, man. Come on, man. if you haven't made him truly your Lord and Savior, uh, do you really know? Him? Do you really know who he is? Come on, man. You know, if you're coming here for show or fashion, if you're uh, perpetrating with other folks, oh. you know, people do that. Oh, oh I'm a Christian. Oh, you just all praise the Lord. And then you get to see how they're living. You see how their life is. Yeah. And you recognize that they're not who they say they are. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That wasn't my little seat, but I don't know. You all right. <laughs> but these folks are in a situation. Desperate situation. They're trying to get in. They're striving to get in. Real talk. I wonder how it's going to be, because it's not going to be for me. I wonder how it's going to be for folks that are trying to get into heaven and they stand at the door and they're, they're, they're waiting in that long line and they can't get in. 
I wonder how that's going to be for them. I wonder how that's going to be. But God says in verse 27, he says, but he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. You know, just because God healed your cousin doesn't mean that he knows you. Just because God delivered your, your mother or your father doesn't mean that he knows you. Can I keep can I keep it real? You've spent your whole life, a lot of us, hearing about God. Knowing that God is who he is, knowing that he saves and he delivers and he sets free. But why is it? Why is it that people want to just live their life, ignore that, and just do whatever they want to do? I don't get that. I don't. But then you want to end up like Jesus paints this parable. You want to paint this picture like you're trying to get in. You want to get in now. Now that it's too late. Mm. Do you know that there are religions right now that there's one religion in particular that says um, in order for you to get to heaven, you you basically all of you can go, you can all we can all go to heaven. This is what one religion says. But what you got There's another one. Something called purgatory. Where when you die, you got to work off your penance in order for you to be able to get into the kingdom. I, you may have heard that. I, somebody said, I think a that's not in the Bible anywhere. I never did see that. I heard some Pope wrote that, but I don't know. But people are teaching that. There's false teachings out there about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's crazy to me. But the last part of it, it says, there should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know where that's at, right? That's hell. That's hell. Let me hurry and rush on. Let me just tell you right now. There is a heaven and there is a hell. Amen. There is a heaven yes. and there is a hell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Your soul, when this earthen vessel is done and they put it in the grave, when it returns back to the dust, what's left? What's left is your soul. And your soul is either going to go one or two places. I know this is hard. I know you know you people don't want to hear this stuff, but this is real. I'm, this is a life or death situation as far as I'm concerned. I'm putting the notes down. I'm closing the Bible. I need to tell you something. It's real. Yeah. If you don't understand it, if you don't get it, let me tell you right now that hell is real. Amen. Amen. It's real. So you got to keep that in mind when you're living your life. You got to understand that you you if you know who Jesus is and you know that Jesus knows you, then you have a responsibility and an obligation to live your life in such a way uh -huh. that is pleasing to him. That he knows who you are. You know who he is. And if you go through things, when you go through struggles, when you go through issues, even if you don't have nothing going on, you still got to live a life that's pleasing to him. That's Doesn't that's matter. That's, that's why I said what I said. I was being a little misdirected a little bit with, with uh, being thankful and not questioning God, but I'm being serious. So many people bust hell wide open because they spend time being preoccupied with their struggles, yeah. their situations, yeah, yeah, all the yeah. other things they got going on. I think Snoop Dogg said they got my money on my mind and my mind on my money. You see how that's going to get them in the end? Uh -huh. Let me tell you, you got to be focused on 
what saith the Lord. You got to be yeah. focused on how, living your life in such a way that's pleasing to him. That's what this Bible's for. Yeah. That's why you go to church. Yeah. That's why you pray. That's why you listen to those gospel songs to keep you in the right frame of mind and to live a life in a way that's pleasing to him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But how many of us pay no attention? Maybe you're like a patient of mine, family. Back when I was a manager of the hospital, um, guy had terminal cancer and he was about ready to die. Family came to me and they were like, sir, we, you, know, you want to get him baptized, but he has all these problems and all these medicines and all these issues and there is no way we can get him to a church. Can you please help us? I'm like, they didn't know I was a preacher. I'm like, well, I don't know what I could do, you know. Then so I thought about it. I said, well, what do you want? And they were like, well, if we could just get him baptized. We, we got a pastor that's going to come, and we just don't, we don't have nowhere to get him baptized in a hospital. And I'm like, Lord have mercy. I said, okay. I thought about it. And my unit was actually in a part of the hospital that hadn't been remodeled. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you know, I think I have a tub. <laughs> you know, he had a whole bunch of supplies and stuff on it, you know. <laughs> and so we, um, you know, cleaned it up. The very next day, they came in, the pastor came in, they baptized him. The family was so happy. Got back to the room and uh, they asked me, invited me in for their, I guess they had a, a big prayer that, that next day or that evening. I came and participated and, and the family was very, very, very happy. And I was thinking to myself, man, I wonder what would have happened if I didn't find that tub. Yeah, I wonder how they would have felt if, you know, about the situation. I wonder how the patient would have felt. He was pretty unresponsive at that point. Yeah. Um, yes, there's so many other things. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that regardless of whether or not he got baptized or not, regardless of whether or not he made it in or not, it really doesn't matter. The question is, where are you going to go? Yeah. That's the question. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you going to go yeah. when you close your eyes? When your heart starts beating, when your lungs start breathing, where are you going to go? Where is your destination going to be? The word said that, that our goal is to have our names written in the book of life. When you read the scripture in Revelation, you, you see that there's a book of life and that there's other books. Okay? So either your name's going to be in the book of life or there's going to be other books where your name's going to be in there. The book of life goes to heaven. The books of life, well, your name's in there, guess where you're going? Got to keep it real. You got to understand that our life is real. What God has done for us is real. Where he wants you to go is real. You got to live your life in such a way that's pleasing to him. Yeah, in yeah, such a yeah. way that he can get yeah. the glory out of it. Yeah. Right? You live your life right that there's others that will see God's goodness through you. What you do. How you do. What you say. Yeah. yeah, that's good. And that way other people can come. And their names can be in the book of life as well. Uh -huh. What is it that you're going to do? And in closing, I just want to say this. One of the things that I love about uh, any good leader mm -hmm. is that to me a good leader can do everything that the people that they supervise can do. Mm -hmm. I've always loved that. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was a nurse manager, I could do everything that my staff could do because I'm leading. Mm -hmm. I'm leading them. But let me tell you about God. God said that you need to strive to enter in, that you have to struggle vigorously to get in. I, I wonder uh, what example did Jesus have for us to tell us how to strive to enter in at the straight gate? Yeah, right, right. I heard that Jesus got taken. He got taken from judgment hall to judgment hall. Mm -hmm. 
and he got beat, he got whipped. I call that a struggle. He got whipped so bad that the flesh was torn off of him from those, I think the cat of nine tails, I think that's what they call (laughs) it. I call that a struggle. He got whipped, he got beaten, he got mocked. All for us. I would call that a struggle. He had to carry the cross. There's a, a passage in the commentaries that says the path that he took from the time he got the cross uh, or was forced to carry it, it was a path of about 2,000 meters. Some of the commentators say that they guessed that the cross, the, the weight of it was 165 pounds. And he had to carry that while he was being beaten, while he was being whipped, while he was being mocked, all for us. I call that a struggle. He had to carry that cross, and even it got so heavy, it got so rough for him, that he had to stop. He physically couldn't carry it. And someone had to come and help him. Did you see that in scripture? That's how I call that a struggle. Jesus said that you had to strive to enter in. He had to strive to enter in. He had to strive to enter, uh, strive to get to the cross, strive to get to Golgotha, to the hill, to where he was going to be crucified. He had to struggle vigorously to get there. And I'm so glad he did. Because he gave us an example about striving. He had to strive to get to to a point where they were going to shed his blood. And because if he didn't make it, if he didn't do it, if he didn't, let me tell you something. There can be no redemption without the blood being shed. The, The struggles that we're doing right now, striving to enter into God's kingdom, it's nothing compared to the struggle and strife that he had to go through. Yeah. If he didn't make it through the cross, we wouldn't make it into heaven. Yeah. Thank you. Cross, I thank you, Lord, for fixing it up in such a way, Lord, that we can be reconciled with you. Heaven and hell is real. Yeah. Don't forget that. Amen. Think about that. The next time you decide you want to do about that. The next time you see someone who's struggling with life and life's problems, think about that. So that you can be in a situation that knows who you are. So when the time comes, he can let you in. Amen. To the, through the straight gate, uh, strive to go through the narrow door. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't wait till the door closes to try to walk through it. Yeah. Amen. 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 There's too many of us that are around Jesus, and the fact that we see an open door, we got comfort that, wow, God loves us. He know my heart. There is an open door right there. Whenever I get ready to walk through it, I can walk through it. But how many know there comes a time where the yeah. door closes? Yeah, yeah. Where the master rises up and he shuts the door. Yeah. And unfortunately, there are going to be too many people waiting to make a step over to him until they hear the door slam. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. The whole reason why we are speaking reset. Reset don't mean just for you to have a better life with less struggles. Yeah. Reset don't mean that, oh, I got to fix something and, and make some things right and I can get my money right. Reset means getting right with God. Yeah. 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 Reset means getting right with God. So this was a timely text and a timely message because God is a God of love, but he's also a God of justice. Yes, he, is. he is a God of grace, but he's also a God of justice. And sometimes if we're not careful, we will take the grace of God for granted. Amen. He'll love us. He'll forgive us. But what if our time run out and you didn't get a chance again to repent? Somebody say amen. amen. There we are coming into a time, and I praise God for you. Let's give God.
We are in a time and we are in a season that we must pick a side. Yes. You need this day, whom you will serve. Yeah. Amen. Are you hearing this? Yeah. And every time, and I noticed this, and you look at the text, whenever there was a crowd around Jesus, there was a lot of people around Jesus for different reasons. Right. You, you would have people who were disciples. You had Pharisees who were trying to trip him up. You even had Judas. Judas was around Jesus too. Yes, he was. Yeah. His only plot was not to love him, but to betray him. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And we have to make sure that we're not just comfortable with church attendance. Yeah. Because there are a lot of people who come around Jesus, but not everybody's there for the right reason. Yeah. And I'd hate for me to know of him, but he not know my name. There is an urgency here, and I want, I want to put this out there, and I hope we're in the presence of mind, and this is a question that only you can answer. Yeah. I know you know where the church is located, but do you know him? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, I know your grandmama used to sing the hymns of the church, but do you know him? Yeah. I know she prayed for you to, 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 to things change around, but do you know him? Yeah. And this is the time that we're doing it. Sometimes people say, man, it's tough because the gate is narrow. Mm -hmm. Don't get, get don't get caught up on the fact that the gate is open. Be encouraged that the gate is open. Yes. 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 Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And aren't we glad that right now, as we can, no matter what we did or what we did not do, we have an opportunity yes. to make it right yes. and walk through an open door. Yes. Tomorrow, I can't tell you with certainty that the door will still be open. Yeah, 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 yeah. But right now, there is an open door. It's one thing to have an open door. It's nothing to have an open invitation. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, come on. I hit somebody different. Because some of us felt that we didn't deserve to be invited to this kind of party. If you looked at our rap sheet, looked at the stuff that we used to do, and all the stuff that we went through, but there was an open invitation. Yeah. And God is inviting somebody to make a decision to walk through the door of salvation. Amen. Will you give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ? And if you are here right now, this is your moment and this is your time. Don't leave out of here questioning if you're in real relationship with yeah. him. Yeah. If you have a question about it, answer it right now by giving your life to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let's not have any more doubt, any more confusion. If you have a question, God says, come on in. You're thinking, that's harsh for you to close the door. Mm, how long was that door open? How many chances did we have? How many opportunities did he give us? How many times has he's revealed himself? And he says, I love you that much when it comes to time where the grace runs out. 